Good evening, everyone. Nya jong shuo tlo. Wo wang chi chao gu bi jing mo shi ho mo nuo lu gong wo ge ha. Ta wang chu ha ge wang lu gu wo ge. Gu yao si fu mong ho. Gu hun ju zuo ke si fu cha gong wa. Ha lu dong chang si hu peng jing. First Hmong Alliance Church. Sai ta me gu duo gong bi ho Wednesday night service mo nuo. Uh, we welcome you all to our Wednesday night Bible study and prayer here at First Hmong Alliance Church. We hope that you guys are all doing well. Uh, we're very glad that you guys are able to join us tonight. Uh, just a quick reminder uh, before we jump in tonight uh, that next week on Sunday, April 4th, uh, we'll be opening our church services again uh, next week on Sunday. We invite you all to join us as we celebrate Easter together. But other than that, as we begin this evening, we're going to start off in our time of prayer. We are going to be praying for Hmong District this evening. Conferences, how retreats Jolu summer no. So we're just going to pray over uh, the three things that are going to be going on this summer. Uh, we're going to be praying for annual conference, pastoral retreat, as well as flu conference this evening. I know that it has been difficult the past year and a half now planning for these retreats uh, as the pandemic has forced a lot of uh, different health and safety guidelines and protocols. So we want to continue to pray for the leaders as they plan out these events and these conferences. So tonight, join me as we pray for Hmong District. Let us pray together. Lord, we thank you so much for your love and your grace. We thank you for uh, bringing uh, men and women who are faithfully serving you, um, especially at the Hmong District level, Lord. We thank you for uh, leaders at Hmong District uh, who are serving you. I know that it has been a hard year uh, with everything going on with COVID, with the pandemic, things being shut down. And Lord, as they plan out these conferences, these retreats, these gatherings, Lord, I pray for discernment as uh, they try to keep everyone safe. I know that the guidelines and the, the protocols are all gonna be going on. And so I pray that everyone would take the right precautions and adhere to those things, Lord. I just pray that uh, you would be uh, with them as they plan. Uh, not just in the health and safety, but also in how they preach your word, Lord. We pray for faithfulness, uh, that uh, the speakers, the leaders, uh, those who will be uh, taking the stage will be faithful to your word and how they preach, Lord. We pray uh, for protection as um, people from all over the country will travel to certain places, Lord, whether it be Milwaukee for annual conference, whether it be Indiana for flu, whether it be Colorado for pastoral retreat, Lord, that all these things would go according to your plans and your purposes. And I pray that you would watch over all of us, Lord. And so we pray for Hmong District, the leaders there. Thank you for their commitment, their service to you. And I just pray that you would give them the wisdom, Lord, that they would not try to do things in their own strength, but instead, they would trust in you as you guide them, Lord. And as they lead and empower the local churches, I pray for the local churches to be responsive as well, uh, to take part, to help out in how you are working within the Hmong district, Lord. So we thank you so much. We pray all these things tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, over the past few months now, uh, we have been qu on quite a journey in John chapter 5 together here on our Wednesday nights. Lu ihli halu ahli monsulu behli sao no beko oke u beko Wednesday nights and dao yang gu jeng jeng heng beko oke hu yohan chong chi lu nja lu gu belu ko oke hu yohan chang de no yo le no beko hata yesu yo wang chu Cho yang gu yohan shao hu nu pom de no Kacho be ko be bao hata yesu yo leng tu Kako ke be bao hata yesu yo wang chu The biblical truth that we have been exploring together in the Gospel of John is that Jesus is God What a powerful 
statement that is. And we see it unfold in this narrative in John chapter 5. In this narrative, it begins with a miracle that Jesus performs. He heals a sick man, one who has been sick for 38 years. He simply tells the man to get up and walk. Now the Jewish leaders, the scholars, they know this truth about God. That healing and salvation, all these things come from God alone. He alone has the authority over all things. And Jesus, in his actions, in performing these miracles of healing, is claiming the same authority. Johan Shaokhan Oko Pe Pao Han Jeng Hata Yesu Yo Vang Chu Cho Tu Yu Da Yeng Pao Hata Vang Chu Yo Tu Ku Mo Fu Chi Ku Mo Nyo Tu Mo Fu Chi Mo Ke Jo Pli Cho Tu Neng Yo Yesu O Tao Te Yesu Yeng Yo Vang Chu Ta but remember this one important detail that we will bring up once again tonight is that Jesus healed this man on a Sabbath day. Tonight we see the confrontation between the Jewish leaders and Jesus. But before that, let us go back and see the interaction of the man who was healed and the Jewish leaders. We have learned many truths about the person of Jesus. But the Gospel of John also tells us about the nature of man in this short interaction in verses 10 to 15 in chapter 5. We saw the character of Jesus proving why he is God. And we have also seen the nature of man that goes against the character of God. We have learned five truths up to this point about man. Let me quickly review them for us. Beko hata i doneng yo tau zi jo lu tu. Doneng yo zha zi jo lu tu. Ta bo o ge ji zhong o ge tsu. Right, man will judge and condemn others, especially when they fall short, especially when they are in sin. The second thing that we saw, yang o beko hata doneng yo tau te jo lu tu. Doneng yo ji leng bao ko jing. Man will blame others. They will hide the truth that they know if it protects them. Yang be beko hata, doneng yo ji leng hata yesu ya vang chu. Mon dao tu kun cheng hata yesu yeng ya itu zi neng gu zhong heng. Nu on dao yang le nu zhong. We learn that man will not acknowledge Jesus as God. They say many things about Jesus, but they fail to recognize who he truly is. We learn that man will continue to sin. They will not just so easily give up their sinful lifestyle. And it is only God who can convict those sinners. 
Peke hata tonen, yo len pao Yesu, ko potao te yang jong su. Man will proclaim Jesus for personal gain. We learned this last week. This reality that as long as it benefits me, then I will say I am a Christian. Yes, I will say I go to church as long as I get those benefits. All of this adds up to the reality, this truth, that man is sinful, man is flawed, man is unable to save themselves. We see these truths in these small interactions in John chapter 5. We see that there is a clear difference between what man does versus what God does. However, what do we see about Jesus? What makes him so different from the man who he healed at the beginning of chapter 5? What makes him so different from the Jewish leaders that we see confront this man? Well, tonight we will see this truth arise once again that Jesus is God. Again, Johan Ying, Shao Cheng Chope at a Yesu Ya Vang Chu, and Mano Pe Yotokan Lupu. But we will see the author John giving us even more proof of this truth. So tonight, the biblical truth that we will learn is this that Jesus is God because he fulfills the laws of God perfectly. And we see this in John chapter 5, verses 16 to 17. Let us read those verses together as we, before we dive in. I'll read the English first, and then we will read the Hmong. John chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. For this reason, the Jews were persecuting Jesus because he was doing these things on a Sabbath. But he answered them, My father is working until now, and I myself am working. Wow, what is happening here? The Jewish leaders do not approve of what Jesus is doing because they claim that it goes against God's law. But Jesus answers them with something very interesting. He does not defend himself. He does not say, no, I am not breaking the law. But instead he says, just as God, my Father, does, I do the same. Again, Jesus is God because he fulfills the laws of God. He does not go against God's law, like what the Jewish leaders are saying, but he actually fulfills the law. Now, what do I mean when I say the word fulfill? By saying that Jesus fulfills the law, it is that he is the completion of what God has been planning, of what God has prophesied to them. 
Again, he is the completion of what God has been planning and what he has prophesied. And as we have seen, man cannot perfectly abide by the law. That is where man will fall short time and time again. But Jesus, he can abide perfectly by the law. He does abide perfectly by the law. But Jesus can, whether people acknowledge it or not. Tau guhatsu yesu tuku o toyanta guhatsu nu ge kyo ge sang ge o ning toyanta no la yesu o nuchi o nuchi mo ge tsu le. Hatsu nu sabato no la yesu chi o tsu. Kya yu dai sang hata nu nu tsu po ge jai. And so we see this biblical truth that Jesus is God because he fulfills the laws of God. So let us see the confrontation unfold in verses 16 and 17. Let us read verse 16 once again. So we'll pull it up here. Verse 16. For this reason, the Jews were persecuting Jesus because he was doing these things on a Sabbath. The Jewish leaders claim that Jesus is breaking the Sabbath. Now let us remember, be reminded these things about the Sabbath that we have already learned. We learned that the Sabbath was instituted by God himself. And we see that he commanded his people to do the same, to keep the Sabbath day holy. And it became Old Testament law and tradition, something that they had to do in order to be saved. At least that's what they thought. And it was very important to the Jewish culture, so important that if you did not follow the laws, it was punishable by the way of court and trial. Nu sabato jengeng hing jo jia yu dai. Yao mo yi tu o tsu nu sabato de mang dao zi si. Right, with the man's testimony in verse 14, testifying against Jesus, they now have the right to judge and condemn him for breaking the Sabbath. And that is their biggest complaint, and that is their biggest accusation against Jesus. He was doing more work than he was allowed to. So we see that confrontation in verse 16. The Jews persecuting Jesus because they claim that he broke the law. But how does Jesus respond to this. How does Jesus respond? He responds as we will see in verse 17. Let us read verse 17 once again. Verse 17 says this, but he answered them, my father is working until now and I myself am working. Yesu te pohata 
Gutsi yang o nu ji shu le. Yolen do gu yang yo o nu ha. In this verse, Jesus does not respond by getting defensive, but he responds with a truth claim about who he is. What is this truth claim? In this statement, Jesus claims equality to God. Jesus is saying, I am God. I am equal to God. As my Father does, I am also doing. Now this phrase, my Father, in the Jewish culture, in the Jewish lifestyle, that carries a heavy importance. See, in the Jewish way of life, Many people, many young men, they did exactly as their father did. They did exactly as their father did. Many Jewish people, they did exactly as their father did. Yaw,古奇,我一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,一样,
But because of their legalistic, because of their work-based belief, they fail to realize what Jesus is saying. And so again, this evening we see that Jesus is God because he fulfills the laws of God. He did not come to undo the law. He did not come to go against it. But he came to show that he is the true Sabbath. And as the Jewish leaders have observed him, they cannot deny what he has done. And yet, they still choose to reject him. So again, we see this conflict between man and God. But to end here, I have this question. What does this truth mean for you and me? As believers today, what does this mean? Uh, Hallu, What does this truth mean for you and me? This truth that Jesus is God as he upholds, as he fulfills the laws of God. It is important because we can remember that our Lord Jesus lived a righteous and holy life. The one that we place our faith in has never failed. We look around now in this country, we see the attitudes we see the brokenness of many leaders in this nation, in this world. And we say, how can we possibly put our hope and trust in them? They just keep letting us down. They say something, they do the other. They say something, they cannot deliver. Maybe we may even look at the leaders within this church and say, Man, the decisions that they have made are not wise. Look at all of their mistakes that they have made. But in times where we feel that way, we must remember that our true leader, our true Savior, our Lord Jesus upholds and fulfills God's perfect law. So let us remember that as we think upon this truth. And in John chapter 5, we have learned so many different things. But let us remember the greatest of all, that Jesus is God. Yesu ya vanchu. Let us remember who Jesus is. Let us pray to close. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your love and your grace for us. I thank you so much for your word, a reminder of who you are for us, a reminder of how great Jesus Christ is, this reality that he has fulfilled and upheld the laws of God perfectly in ways that man could never. And so, Lord, we continue to place our trust in that. 
we thank you for your word this evening. I pray that you would watch over us as we go throughout the rest of this week, that we would gather very soon here to worship you, to praise you, to lift your name on high, Lord. We thank you so much. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.